it's about time. No, this isn't an impatient plea for an easing of lockdown. In fact, I think that in this country we started lockdown too late and we're relaxing it possibly too early. But it is about lockdown and in particular um, about our attitudes, our experience of time and our perceptions of time in lockdown. Uh, strange things seem to be happening. The position of the hands on the clock don't seem to matter as much as they normally do. Uh, we seem to have a, a distorted uh, image of time, a bit like the melting clock faces on Salvador Dali's uh, painting, The Persistence of Memory. I want to talk briefly about three aspects of our experience of time and our perceptions of time in lockdown. First, the changed rhythms of life that we are experiencing. Life has its rhythms in plant and animal and human life especially, the rhythms of day and night, weekdays and weekends, the months, the seasons, the annual cycles, annual festivals and celebrations. And talking of seasons, uh, Val and I lived in East Africa for a year and we were about two degrees north of the equator. And when we came back home after that year, we noticed just how good it is to have the seasonal rhythms, uh, something that we'd missed uh, for that year. Mind you, in lockdown, there are some new rhythms as well. Here in the UK, we've been clapping for the workers in the National Health Service at eight o'clock every Thursday evening, going outside and, and clapping our appreciation of these frontline workers. Rhythms of life. The rhythms of life have a powerful beat. Sammy Davis Jr. sang many years ago. Um, it seems that the rhythm is beating a little slower uh, in lockdown. And even though we've slowed down and have been putting less pressure on ourselves, at the same time, when we look back, time in lockdown seems to have been passing surprisingly quickly. And an explanation of this is that, well, when everything is the same, our activities, our location, time seems to pass slowly. And we give more attention to time. And the more attention we give to it, the slower it goes. Um, a watched pot never boils. However, when we, in retrospect, look back upon the weeks or the months of lockdown, at time seems to have gone very quickly because there are fewer changes, fewer new memories being made, fewer landmarks in time. And even if we're busy, busy with Zoom meetings all day, we're still in the same location. So there's still that sameness which uh, feels slow to experience while you're going through it, but seems to have gone very quickly when we look back upon it. The rhythm of work and rest is especially important. Uh, the first blog I wrote back at the beginning of the year before we knew that all these changes were coming uh, was entitled Green Spaces in Time. We need those green spaces. The Sabbath for the Jew was the climax of the week. But uh, we have here in the UK a government that's considering relaxing totally the Sunday trading laws uh, for the sake of the economy and for the sake of uh, people's jobs. Let's be thankful. Let's be thankful for the rhythms of life 
and let's make space for God-filled moments in those rhythms. A second aspect of our experience of time is of its irreversibility, of the fact that the arrow of time goes irresistibly in one direction only. Isaac Watts, in his old hymn, O oh God, our help in ages past, talked of time as being like an ever-rolling stream bearing all of us away. And as we see the daily statistics of how many people have died, as we hear the news of the deaths of acquaintances or loved ones um, because of infection by the coronavirus, we become very aware of our mortality, very aware of the irreversibility of time. Henri Bergson said, the most naked experience of time is that of a death and a birth occurring together. And 13 years ago, in March, my mother passed away and in less than a month, our second grandson was born. Dylan came into our lives and there was very definitely that feeling of the past being gone and irretrievable and the future opening up with all its possibilities, all its promises. Let's remember as we contemplate this arrow of time, this irresistible movement of time, that Christ is risen. And because he is risen, we can have the possibility of resurrection ourselves. A third aspect of our experience of time is of the experience of total uncertainty about the future. We feel almost as if we're backing into the future. The ancient Greeks and the Mesopotamians thought of the future as being behind them. They're reversing towards it and the past as being in front of them. They could look over the past and, and contemplate it. Uh, but our modern Western notion of time has us facing the future and the past very definitely behind us. Our younger son, Gareth, when he was he was very young and one day he was searching for the word yesterday and he couldn't get it. And he said, the day at the back of this one. And he revealed in, in saying that, that he already had imbibed that notion of the future as being something that we are facing, something that we're moving towards or something that's moving towards us and of the past as being definitely behind us. And in our experience of lockdown and this total uncertainty about the future, about what's going to happen, about our jobs perhaps, about the economy, about when we're going to be able to have our loved ones visit us in our homes. Um, it's as if we're rowing, facing back rather than forward. We can see where we've come from and we just don't know where, where we're going to. Of course, in a rowing boat, although the rowers are looking backwards, there is the cox and he's always looking forward. He's the one who's, or she, who's steering the boat and uh, coordinating the power and the rhythm of the rowers. So as we go backwards into the future and wonder what may be coming, 
uh, we need we need a cox. The New Testament image is, is not that of a, a cox in a rowing boat. It's that of a shepherd. It's the Old Testament. It's Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The shepherd doesn't drive the sheep on in front of him. The shepherd goes in front and leads the sheep and they follow. I love the Russian translation of Good Shepherd. Um, in Russian, it's Dobry Pastor. I hope my Russian speaking friends will forgive me for pronouncing the, those lovely words with an Irish accent. Dobry Pastor, Good Shepherd. We need the cocks in our rowing boat. We need the Good Shepherd and we can trust him as he goes on in front of us. I'd like to conclude with a prayer. It's quite a long prayer. It was written by um, Robert Banks, an Australian writer, and it's in his book, The Tyranny of Time. And it goes like this. It's, it's entitled, A Prayer About Time. God, our Father, you are the maker of everything that exists, the author of the world of nature and of all living things, the creator of both space and time. Without you, there would be no past, present or future, no summer or winter, spring or autumn, seed time or harvest, no morning or evening, months or years. Because you give us the gift of time, we have the opportunity to think and to act, to plan and to pray, to give and to receive, to create and to relate, to work and to rest, to strive and to play, to love and to worship. Too often we forget this and fail to appreciate your generosity. We take time for granted and fail to thank you for it. We view it as a commodity and ruthlessly exploit it. We cram it too full or waste it, learn too little from the past or mortgage it off in advance. We refuse to give priority to those people and things which should have chief claim upon our time. Help us to view time more as you view it, and to use it more as you intend. To distinguish between what is central and what is peripheral, between what is merely pressing and what is really important, between what is our responsibility and what can be left to others, between what is appropriate now and what will be more relevant later. Guard us against attempting too much because of a false sense of our indispensability, a false sense of ambition, a false sense of rivalry, a false sense of guilt, or a false sense of inferiority. Yet do not let us mistake our responsibilities, underestimate ourselves, fail to be stimulated by others, overlook our weaknesses, or know our proper limits. Enable us also to realise that important though this life is, it is not all. That we should view what we do in the light of eternity, not just our limited horizons, that we ourselves have eternal life now. God, our Father, you are not so much timeless as time full. You do not live above time so much as hold all times in your hand. You have prepared for us a time when we will have leisure to enjoy each other and you to the full, 
and we thank you, appreciate you, and applaud you for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you.